Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Move Ahead with Dahlia. On today's episode, we are talking about podcasts. We're talking about online marketing and all things video. My guest is my awesome real estate marketing coach, Gino Pronos. Hey, Gino. Hey. <sighs> feels, feels weird to be on the other side. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have been recording podcasts now for over a month and Gino's been on behind the scenes and now you're in front of the camera. It's where I belong. I'm in front, in front of the camera. That's right. right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Look, people deserve this. Yes, absolutely. Just kidding. Um, How are you? Good. Great, actually. Awesome. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a guest today, but also thank you so much for everything you've been doing to help me with this podcast from the beginning. It's been an incredible ride so far, and I'm looking forward to a lot more of the podcasting and a lot more of the videos and um, just a lot more fun with this process. Well, you know, I just make suggestions what I think could benefit you, benefit your business, but you're doing all the work. I mean, there's not, I'm not really doing much of anything. Okay, you're sitting here, you're the one giving all the content and you're the one putting in all the time and the hours. I'm just kind of making suggestions, right? But um, I'm curious to know, now that you've got a few episodes under your belt and you've been, you've been actually like producing content and uh, at a pretty high level, actually, um, all things considered, you know, what, what has your response been like? It's been great. Um, I will say there is a lot of work involved, um, keeping up with, um, like the scheduling and, um, communication, but overall the response has been great. So many people have, um, cheered me on mm -hmm. in this process, this new venture and, um, you know, uh, people have been responding positively to mm -hmm. the things that I've been posting, um, some of the uh, preview clips that I've been posting and the podcasts, mm -hmm. the information that I've been sharing. So, so far, I love it. Awesome. Um, yeah, like your podcast is about real estate. Yes, that's one of the themes, but it's really more than that. I think it's really about uh, the community. Overall, mm -hmm. it's about bringing exposure to special people and special organizations that are out there helping people. Okay. So yeah, you do have that backdrop of real estate. This is your career. It's what you do. Okay. It's what you focus on. But, you know, I think the podcast uh, is going to take on a much bigger form, much bigger life than you might realize. Because... Yeah, I, I definitely hope so. Um, again, because it I, to me, it feels like it is more about community work versus um, a business. Mm -hmm. And I, I definitely hope that that's the way, um, what you're saying, that it, that it does progress to that. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to talk about you. Tell me a little bit about what you do, why you started um, the online marketing uh, coaching. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, my background is in like creative service, like video production, marketing, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So a few years ago, I said, I've got a brilliant idea. I'm going to start a marketing agency. Mm -hmm. Why not? Right. Um, especially at that time, it was kind of the trend to like uh, starting your own business, but on top of that, marketing agencies, because they have, it's kind of low hanging fruit. It's kind of a low barrier to entry as well. Like you can, you can get started with very little. Mm -hmm. So it's a good business, just like real estate. Yeah. Same, same type of thing. Um, and then I was also just by coincidence, I was uh, studying for my real estate license because I said, why not? Just something I always wanted to try. So then I said, well, instead of just saying like, I'm going to go help all clients in all directions and in all industries, I'm just going to combine them all. So I said, I'm going to focus on helping uh, real estate professionals, right? So then over the last few years, uh, I've been building that, but I've also been building my real estate career. Okay. So when I'm talking to potential client, like other realtor or, or broker owner or any, anyone else in the industry, you know, I now have kind of nuanced knowledge 
about not just marketing in general, but how to apply it to uh, the real estate industry. And of course, all that really means is how do you use it to get leads for your business, right? So, uh, but again, it's very specific to prospecting as a realtor, you know, which I'm sure there's a lot of overlap for a lot of other industries, but right. with both real estate, it has its own set of challenges like any other thing that you do. Um, so I've basically just decided I'm going to stack all that into one thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, I focus a lot on not just organic or traditional marketing, mm -hmm. which still applies, but uh, the big opportunity that we have in the digital realm, right? Like social media marketing or email marketing, um, advertising, stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of it, a lot of it's simple and that anyone could do themselves with their own, with just a phone. Yeah. Right. And that's one of the things that I want to touch on as well, because when you and I got together for the first chat about doing podcasting, um, I remember you saying that these, uh, this type of, um, work can be done with pretty basic tools, right? Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, um, you know, with the cell phone. Right. Yes. Yep. So tell me a little bit about that and like our initial conversation, like if you were talking to a new client that wants a consultation for um, not just podcasting, but in general, maybe they want to start doing videos uh, for their business and what you told me that you would tell them. Uh, well, the biggest challenge that I have, I've talked to hundreds of people at this point. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I could sit there and I could explain the technical side. Here's how you make a video. Here's how you make it sound good. Here's the type of microphones you need. You need, here's lighting you could use and here's all the equipment, blah, 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 blah. But that's not really the hard part of it all. Mm -hmm. The hard part is convincing them that this stuff matters. Okay. Slash helping them get over the fears that they may have of getting in front of the camera. Yes. The big one. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, number one, you have to accept that this stuff, quote unquote, is, which is like social media marketing. Um, that's, that's one piece of it, of like your ecosystem, but like digital marketing, uh, that the stuff is worth doing and it can right. actually help your business. Right. A lot of people are having trouble getting over that. People who've maybe been in the business for longer periods of time, mm -hmm. they've done things a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have their own reasons for resisting it. Yes. And then if you can convince them to at least try it, mm -hmm. then now comes the part where they actually have to produce stuff and you can go over strategy, what you're doing, why you're doing it, where you're going to distribute it, why, uh, how to use it to generate leads, blah, blah, blah. You can go over strategy all you want and it makes perfect sense. But then when you hit record, Everyone freezes up at first. <laughs> yes. It's, it's like almost yes. universal. Automatic. Yeah. Like I probably told you the story before, but I worked with uh, real, let's just say power players, right? Mm -hmm. In real estate. They know what they're doing, doing it for decades. Yeah. They could sit in, in any situation. They know their stuff. Mm -hmm. They could deliver any presentation. They could get any type of business. They could land any client, whatever it is. But you point this little black box at them. <laughs> they can't remember their own name. Yep. It's, it's amazing. It's been one of the most fascinating things that I've encountered in this whole process. Um, so, and you did a good job of this at first, but certainly, you know, it's a common thing is, is this even happened to me right mm -hmm. at the beginning. It's not that easy at first. It takes, it takes, you got to jump off that cliff. Yes. It's scary. Yes. But then you realize after you do it three, four or five times, Hey, it's not so bad. Yeah. It's actually not that hard. No. And hey, hey I, 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 I actually launched it. I put it out there and people saw it. And guess what? They responded positively. Yes. They're actually encouraging me. They actually like what I'm doing. And all of a sudden now you're like, wow, you, you can kind of see uh, the path, I guess, to success. You could see that it it's worth doing. You could see that people actually will respond to it. And you yep. start to see, it starts to become sort of clear that you can use this stuff as a tool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I know that when um, I called you, I think it was um, in December, we, Gino and I have known each other for a few years, but we haven't communicated much, right? We had a, a transaction 
um, several years ago. And during that closing, um, you mentioned that you work in the media industry, uh, aside from real estate. And that stayed in the back of my mind. You planted that seed and yeah. there it was. And they stayed with me all these years. Um, at the end of last year, Robert Padron, the broker owner of this office, he messaged me or no, we, we discussed something and he said he was going to put a little like podcast room in the office and everything just started, you know, flying in my head. I'm like, here it is. This is the opportunity. I better pull the trigger and get it done. I called you. We met for about an hour or more. And we talked about all these things that um, run in my head. Um, which you mentioned, um, you know, the fear of like the um, just starting it, the step, the baby step is starting it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to say that the most difficult part for me, there are two parts. One was um, the actual first video um, for the podcast, which was just an intro. But then the second part was posting it mm -hmm. like the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and of course it was all favorable. And if it wasn't, I think I would have been okay with that too, because, um, at that age where, you know, I just toss it to the wind. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have to say that I wouldn't have done it without you because as my real estate marketing coach, I feel that you're holding me accountable now. And yeah. when I say something, I better do it. Right. So I had to be like, okay, I'm going to set up these schedules and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to do the interviews. Um, the first interview I did was with Mario Mena and who's um, a mural artist on the south side of Chicago. And I was so nervous, but that interview went really nicely. I was so happy with it. And again, it was, again, the fear of just like jumping in and trying it. Mm -hmm. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. Uh... Everyone's so different in that way. And everyone needs something different. Mm -hmm. Some people, they need the technical training. Mm -hmm. Some people just need that accountability. They need the, the, that, that partner in the process. Yes. Some people need it all. Okay, but everybody's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, I could have just given you a list of, of equipment, said buy this, go on YouTube, you'll figure it out. You'll learn how to set it up. It's not that hard. Um, and you could have just been on your way and maybe you would never do anything. Right. Because you don't have a, an accountability partner. Right. And that stuff's important to, to people a lot it of times. It is. Um, some people, and it's not good or bad, right or wrong. It's just some no. people really need that to stay on track. Some mm -hmm. people don't. Mm -hmm. Some people just say, well, I don't know how a camera works, but I want to do it. So how do I do it? Right. Everyone needs something different. Yeah. And for you... I'm so glad that you actually took that leap. Because a lot of people don't, you know, especially in today's age. Like it's, it's. I think it's universally accepted that this stuff, social media, uh, the internet, it's here to stay, and it's useful as mm -hmm. a business tool. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone's kind of aware that they should be on it, should be doing something, right? But you don't always know how to use it effectively as a tool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, let alone actually produce stuff, like let alone know how to use cameras, microphones, and lights, which again, don't really need that stuff to produce good content, but people will always make that excuse that they do. Yes. And they'll use that as one of those things that stops them from doing anything. Yes. Say, well, ugh, it's not going to look good. It's not going to sound good. Oh, I, uh, I shouldn't do it. No one's going to like it. Well, you're wrong, mm -hmm. but, uh, Everyone's got their own challenges is all I'm getting at. So I help people try to understand that as well. Cause like, like I already said, majority of this is psychological. Yes. Like, you know, you should be doing it. You know, it's not that hard to do it. The strategy you might need help with, but that's not hard to understand. It doesn't take that much time. So you just got to get over it and you got to do it. You got to accept that. People want to hear from you. They want to see your face. They want to hear your voice. They want to see you being active. Um, and they're going to celebrate that because they love you, right? Like, like on Facebook, 
especially most people on there, if not all of them, these are people that you've already created relationships with over time, right? These are already right. your friends, your family, right? You've already done 90% of the work as a realtor. Okay. You've convinced these people to like you and love you. So they want to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. Doing the prospecting, doing the marketing to those people. That's kind of the easy part, mm. right? You've already built a relationship. What, yeah. do you, what do they always tell you in real estate? It's all about the relationship. Correct. Or any client service business, of course. But yes, um, you know, like even, for example, like even if you're doing cold prospecting perfectly at a high level, spending lots of money, you know, you're a big investment in that. It's still going to be 20% or less of your business if you're doing it perfectly. Mm -hmm. The majority of your business is still going to come from, um, you know, people you know, your database. Okay. And Facebook makes it a lot just as one example, it makes it uh, a lot easier for people to get stuff in front of your database. Right. And on Facebook, in today's world, that's where attention is. Mm -hmm. That's one of the punchlines because, yeah, you could still contact these people through traditional routes. You can call them, do your pop buys, send your mailers, and that's fine. That should be part of your complete ecosystem anyway. But now you can just go on Facebook and make content, get in front of everybody. And you know that they're actually consuming it. Right. Because you know people are there every day. They're logging in every day. They're seeing it every day. Um, so it's just, it's it's an incredibly powerful and efficient tool if you know how to use it. So, um, and I mean, for the average person, Facebook's probably enough, at least to get started, right? You don't, yes, you could be on 12 different platforms. And now you got, but now you got to learn how to produce content natively for 12 platforms, because that matters too. You can't just always copy and paste content and stick it everywhere. Right. That's definitely not what you should do for various reasons. But uh, Facebook, because that's where all your friends are already, mm -hmm. that's probably where you should concentrate if you're gonna do anything. Like start there first and, and expand out from there. Well, and I wanna mention that um, when, Someone says they want to do a video uh, for their business or or in general, just any kind of video. Let's say you just want to um, highlight a, a neighborhood business. Um, many times the goal is to do it, but people don't do it. Mm -hmm. One, because of fear, right? Because they're uh, they get nervous and they that gets the best of them. Um, but many times it's just very simple, you know, uh, they'll find an excuse to not do it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I felt like the accountability was um, crucial for me, mm -hmm. not for everyone, but for me, mm -hmm. is when I said I was going to do it, we scheduled it and we did it and there was no turning back. Right. Yeah, right. Um, so, again, I want to thank you for that because... That was a critical um, time for me to actually do what I said I was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to ask you a little bit more about, let's talk a little bit about the podcasting business, right? So um, you have helped clients with, in general, uh, videos that uh, they want to uh, post for their businesses in real estate because that's kind of like your niche is the real estate video media marketing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we've done, you know, so much, um, maybe like five or six videos in podcasting. Um, when someone calls you and says, look, I want to do, um, I want to start a podcast video. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do? What is the first thing you do to get them um, engaged and started? Well, First is establishing uh, what, because I, I said this to you also in the past, like there's many things you can do. Mm -hmm. Video, podcasting, you could write blogs, okay? You could do pictures, whatever you like to do. So we have to establish what are you actually going to do? Like what makes you comfortable? Are you comfortable being on video? Mm -hmm. Some people are not comfortable right away, but they say, okay, I can get over it. Some people really just are not. Right. Okay, so we got to establish, are you going to even do a video version of it? Because you can do an audio only version. Right. Why not? That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to really establish what's going to work for 
that person Mm -hmm. because there is no universal answer for everybody. Yeah. Again, what you can do, we'll have a list of 250 different things. Okay. But no one's going to do 250 things. We have to establish what that person is comfortable doing and what they actually will do seven days a week. Okay. So regarding a podcast specifically, obviously based on your question, they've already established, I want to do a podcast. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and they've established, I think that they want to do a video version, right? So now we have to figure out kind of the creative part of it. So we can actually have a little fun at this point. Um, uh, yeah, we want to go over what it really is and how it works and why you're going to produce it and how you're going to use it as a tool, like I already said. But, you know, at this point, we can actually have some fun and get creative and figure out the format of the show, figure out what you're going to talk about. And doesn't and by the way, it doesn't have to be about real estate. Right. It doesn't have anything to do with real estate necessarily. Right. Um, but is it going to be like an interview? Is it going to be a solo show? Is it going to even be fiction? It could be fiction. Mm. Is it going to be like a teleplay type thing? Yeah. Um, There's so many things you can do. Yeah. Endless things. And then what? So, so all that to say, I have to learn about this person's interest in general. Right. What actually excites them? What gets them fired up? What's something they actually will want to make a podcast about? Mm-hmm. Simply put. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe they sell real estate. And the one of the end goals is they want to use it as a tool to generate leads and referrals. Okay, great. We can figure that out. But maybe what they really, really love to talk about every day, I don't know, is basketball. Or yeah, it could be um, that they love cooking. Cooking. That cooking was like their passion or is their passion. Um, And maybe they want to do some sort of food show. (laughs) Yes. And so, which which leads into the next point, which is, uh, you can sell real estate by talking about oh, anything. Yes, and, I love that. And that that is a real mind bender for people. Yes, I love that. And I remember you mentioning that. Go ahead. Yeah. So people think that, you know, you got to play this real estate character all the time. And, and your quote unquote advertising is you, if you're making a video, it's you standing in front of the video and saying, hey, I sell real estate. I got tons of experience. Can, you know, I can help you buy or sell your home. Great. Fine. But that type of stuff, which is more like salesy or you know, transactional, that right. stuff's not made for social media. Mm. Your friends don't go on social media looking for ads, even if it's from their friends. Right. Okay. So that's an important thing to understand. Yes. So, but again, going back, it's the mental side that's causing all the friction. Okay. Yes. Because if I say, if I say to you, <clears throat> or you say to me, I want to create more content, specifically a podcast, in order to get real estate leads. Okay. But I say, okay, here's how you're going to do it Mm -hmm. after I've gotten to know you. You're going to make a podcast about where you go around and you interview local chefs, Mm. your favorite restaurant, because you love cooking. And you look at me and scratch your head like, what are you talking about? I said, I want to, I want to, I want to get real estate leads. I'm not trying to, you know, why, why am I going to talk to, to restaurant owners? Right. Okay. But you're going to do that because that's what you're passionate about. You're going to do that because at the end of the day, you actually will do it because you like it. And you're going to do it because it's going to allow you to create lots of content, which at the end of the day are just touch points with your database to really summarize it. And touch points means you're top of mind, being top of mind, more touch points. That means more opportunities to create conversations. So you're opening lots of threads every day, hopefully, if you're doing it effectively. And at the end of the month, you have 200 threads open. You talk to 200 people. And of course, you got to be a little accountable to your business at this point. You got to understand what you're doing as a realtor and you got to learn how to drive the conversation eventually to be about real estate, of course. Mm -hmm. But the content, the podcast in this example, the cooking thing, whatever it is, all it really is, is an excuse to create conversations. If I really have to take these thousand things and I have to button it up like that and put a bow on it, that's what I would say. It's about just making stuff, showing it to your friends. They're going to engage with it. They're going to like it. They're going to comment. And then that's your opportunity now to re-engage with them. Right. Which is just talking to them. Right. How, you know, boom. Like, since real estate has been a profession, that's what they tell you. 
you got to talk about real estate. That's how you're going to get leads. You got to talk to people about real estate. Okay. Well, social media allows you to do that. Right. A hundred times a day from your couch. Okay. If you, you know, with a small learning curve, you got to, you got to understand the platform a little, you got to understand the content a little, you got to understand the strategy a little, but it's not that hard. Yeah. And so if you're opening, like I said, 200 conversations a month, which is not that hard, if you're making content every day, you don't think you're going to have conversations that lead to real estate and therefore lead to oh, yeah. referrals and leads and all sorts of things. Yes, absolutely. So that's, it doesn't matter what you're producing. If it's a podcast or you want to do like talking head videos, you want to do educational stuff. You want to do, you want to go really hard on Instagram because you're a good photographer or um, you want to literally make a cooking show. Like I yeah. I, I um, recently, I can't remember. It was a, an article that I read and there's a, a realtor in um, not Chicago, another state. And he does videos. Um, I guess he's a, a skateboarder. Okay. And he does all yeah. kind of crazy skating videos and everybody knows him <laughs> and he loves skating. So I just saw that like a couple of weeks ago and I just started laughing. He, he actually got injured in, um, on a video with his skateboard, but he's doing better. Good. But I thought um, that made so much sense. And that's why what you say makes so much sense to me and is so very honest, because at the end of the day, um, we're posting. If, if you're a realtor only posting and you mentioned this to me as well when we first met, um, when we first had the consultation, um, if you're just posting um, your just sold just listed, um, videos of your properties, you're listing, um, you know, clients can see that you or, or people can see that on any website, on any social media platform. So yeah, they see you, but they're probably going to like say, Oh, nice. And move on. It's not yeah. impacting them. Right. It's not really, um, engaging them unless yep. they're ready to buy right now or ready to sell right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to keep it clean on uh -oh. your behalf. Uh -oh. sure behalf. But like, <laughs> if you do what you just said and you're 100% of the time posting real estate stuff, okay, here's just also just sold, uh, here's a, a, a house tour, here's market rates, mm -hmm. okay, fine. But nobody cares. That's what I like. Nobody cares. Listen to that. Yeah. Why? I want that shirt, by the way. Nobody cares. That's trademarked, so you are pay royalties. <laughs> but you, like, these are people who, like I already said, they know you. Intimately. Yes. They love you. They don't even care unless yes. it's those two weeks in their life where they're shopping for a house. Yes. Why would they care? <laughs> but here's, here's, here's the beautiful part, though. You can send that same message mm -hmm. that, hey, I'm in business. I work hard as a realtor. Right. I'm competent. I have high character. Um, With the testimonials, right? You're like, oh, there's somebody really liked me and really appreciated what I did. That's a perfect example. Yes. You can send the same message mm -hmm. um, contextually and appropriately for that platform, mm -hmm. which we're talking about Facebook. Okay. You can send the same message in a way that people care. It's that simple. You can, you can send any message you want mm -hmm. as unsexy as it is. It's a just sold graphic, right? You can, but you're not going to do that, but you can send that message in a way that your friends care and will engage. Yes. Which leads to conversations. Okay. Just the point of which everything. is the goal. <laughs> yeah. Now you could take your phone, point it at yourself, talk to it for 30 seconds. And you say something very nice about the process you were just in, right? Maybe something really nice about the the clients. Mm -hmm. Obviously, obviously, you got to again be competent and not say something pertinent, you know, about about anything that you right. can't talk about. Right. But say something nice about the process. How much you enjoyed working with those people? Um, how easy they made your life, or which is pretty rare. Oh, I, no, actually, when you said that, the first thing I thought of was um, when you're when you're in the early stages of selling real estate 
it's so challenging, right? Because you're trying to please your client and you don't have any boundaries at that point. Yes. But, but as you get longer and deeper into real estate and years of real estate, you've set those boundaries. So now you really enjoy the people you work with. Yes. I have to be, I'm, I'm a be, witness of that. <laughs> me too. And that could be its own show for three hours. Yes. Uh, <laughs> being able to say no. Yeah. For your own, like, mental health yes for your own sanity that comes with experience and time yes, yes. that could be its own but, yes keep but, going <laughs> um, yeah so you can you can say something very nice it yeah. tugs at the heartstrings it's you gotta be honest and genuine at the end of, of the day course. it has to be of course otherwise none of this matters but you can send a really nice message and you still told him i just sold this house mm -hmm. but there's a massive difference in the engagement level, there's a massive difference in the effectiveness and it matters big time. So yeah, so you could say, well, I, I'm posting a piece of content, quote unquote, and I'm posting a piece of content about uh, that I just sold the house. Okay, that's fine. You're in the game, but the variable to your success is gonna be that creative, mm. right? So it's, you have to understand, again, the game you're playing. You're, you're giving me so many ideas when you're saying this, my, you know, yeah. my brain is firing like it's of just ideas. Tweaking, <laughs> tweaking the way you think about it. Yeah. And that comes with a little practice, but eventually it becomes habit. And so now all of a sudden you're in the mode where, okay, I post on, on uh, Facebook every day. I make yeah. videos every day. It's no big yeah. deal anymore. Great, yeah. I've got over that hump. You also understand what you're posting and why. So you understand you got to talk about real estate sometimes, but now you know how to talk about real estate on Facebook. That's a very important thing I just said. You have to know how to talk about real estate on Facebook. Mm -hmm. That's different than how you would talk about real estate if you sat down with a client face to face, right? Or how you might talk about it on LinkedIn, how you might talk about it on Instagram or, or wherever. It's different. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of, you have to understand, you have to respect the platforms that you're on. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand what type of content is you have to make for that platform. Okay, so you can, so by the way, well, everything we're talking about, like this, this real estate stuff, content, real estate content, this, if this is like the minority of what you talk about, you're gonna ju do just as well. Mm -hmm. If you actually, like you said, you love cooking, you wanna talk about cooking, you post, you take beautiful pictures of these dishes you make, great. You make your live stream of uh, the actual cooking process. I don't know really about cooking, but, uh, <laughs> That content is going to get you real, more real estate business and should be probably 80, 90% of everything you post if that's actually what you care about. Yes. You know, because you care about real estate. It's your career. Of course. You care about your clients. You care about all this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's not it's not the real estate that you're passionate about. It's the fact that you are running a business, right? Mm -hmm. And therefore, what's the next level of that? It's not about, oh, I'm running a business, but oh, I want to maybe... As an example, I don't know, but you want to maybe say, I want to empower other women to do this, other mothers. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can run a successful business and you could be uh, a full time mom and you can be successful and you could be happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're taking it to another level and that's the level where people care, right? Yeah. So you talk about real estate, it's the like lost leader into everything. Right. Now people are listening to you, but what you're really telling them with all your content is stuff you actually care about. Okay. Yes. Like, this, this is just an example. I'm not saying this is you, Dahlia. Maybe it is, but uh, you 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 do a podcast about community involvement and people helping people, right? Like special people, talented people, um, charities. Mm -hmm. Okay, about uh, a lot of women being empowered to uh, run their businesses, right? Yes. Stuff like that. Yes. So that's what your audience is going to care about. Yes, absolutely. And they're going to care about your success. Mm -hmm. And and they want to see your failures too. Let's not let's not discount yes, that. That's an important absolutely. part of it too. You can't you, you can't lie to people and say it's always perfect. You got to tell them the truth that sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. People want to see that too, and that's going to help you too. Yes. But the point is, um, real estate is part of what you do. And so if all you ever talk about is boring real estate stuff and it's boring it's really boring i love real estate i sell real estate too as you know yes but i don't really want to talk about it 
70 years old. <laughs> right. And it, it actually benefits me to know a lot about real estate. But I still don't want to talk about it. Right. You think your friends want to hear about it? Yeah. Come on. But they do want to hear about from you. They want to hear about, hey, I'm successful doing real estate. That's a much different message than wanting to hear about real estate information. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Um, so, so, yeah, I would say that, um, you know, like I always think of either uh, people doing videos, um, either on social media or YouTube. Um, I always thought of them as like fearless, right? People that, you know, they can they can do anything they want to do. <laughs> But it's not true. We all have those fears of getting in front of a camera, even your own cell phone, right? Yeah. Um, I'm fortunate that the uh, broker owner of my office, Robert, has always talked about us doing videos. So, again, those little seeds he's been planting in our heads in our office for years um, have given me, like, the courage to try it. So I do some videos. Um, my son, Devin, helps me with like the small clips that we post on social media. But um, and of course, the nice thing is that those clips, we can take retake them, which I have many times. <laughs> um, but now I realize because of things that you've told me that we it's okay to make a mistake. It's okay to be on camera and slip and say something as long as you're not saying yeah. anything bad, you know, um, a bad word or something. But it, it is okay to make mistakes on camera and it shows your vulnerability, right? It shows you're human. So I encourage people to do it. Um, I've been telling some of the agents in the office as well, just try it. Just do one and get over the fear. Mm -hmm. That's a... Uh... I'm trying to look for something to add to it. I can't, but that's the perfect way to put it is you want to be a human being. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you're making content for other human beings to watch who are just like you. Mm -hmm. They're not perfect. They slip, they fall, they stumble sometimes. Yes. They're, if they were in front of a camera, they very likely would also be nervous mm -hmm. at first. Mm -hmm. They might stutter. They might forget where, what they were talking about. They're like bloopers. It's yeah. okay. We all love watching bloopers. <laughs> yeah. And, like people will respond to that yeah. more than they're going to respond to your perfectly highly produced with perfect lighting, perfect videos, perfect microphones, True. video where you're giving them a market update. True. That's just how it is. True. Okay. Uh, what else? I don't even know what else. That's why, that's why pet videos are so popular. Because people want to see pets, cute pets, ugly pets. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, it just people want to see something different. They don't want to see the same routine on video, right? Yes. If you have a dog, you could use that dog to become a millionaire in real estate easily <laughs> or any business you're doing. Yeah, any business. Okay. Food, food dogs, babies. Do that. Put it on the internet. Yeah. You'll get lots of engagement. Yep. Unfortunately, not usually going to be, not going to get a lot of engagement because you talk about real estate. Just. Yeah. People because. will like it. You know, they'll click the like or whatever, but they really, unless, like you said, unless they're it ready right now to do something, they're just going to keep scrolling through the mm -hmm. uh, Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Well, I found uh, a couple of things on uh, Forbes magazine about podcasting that I wanted to mention. Not a lot of people that I know listen to podcasts. Um, most people watch YouTube videos. So mm -hmm. I post on YouTube um, the videos of um, my podcast, but I also share them on all podcasts. There's about eight or nine different podcast um, platforms that my podcast get posted to. So I checked on some facts and I wanted to mention them. 57% of Americans over the age of 12 listen to podcasts. That's 162 million people. And there are more than two and a half million podcasts available on Apple Podcasts. I didn't know that. Mm. <laughs> like, Never mind. I quit. I'm not doing any more of these. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, here's the beauty of it. 
if you happen to like start some sort of podcast or, or YouTube channel and it gains a lot of traction and you get a million followers, good for you. Great. Right. But the goal is not to do that. The goal is that you're creating content for the 200 people on your database. Right. Okay, so that's how you also have to think of it. Yes, absolutely, I agree. If over time it evolves, good for you. Maybe you can start monetizing it and it turns into its own thing. Great, mm -hmm. but you don't need a million followers for this to be effective. You already have, again, you've already done the hard work. Say, have, wait, 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 say that again. You don't need a million followers. You do not need a million followers. You don't need it. A thousand followers for this to be effective. For it to be effective. I love that. Okay. I you, do really. I love that. Yeah. Great yeah. quote. But there you go. Bring in the heat, like I said. <laughs> you already have a database. Yeah. And if you don't, you should. If you don't have a database, you're not in the business. Yeah, you're so not in real estate. You <laughs> so you you already got a hundred people, two hundred people. You've already convinced them to like you. It's ninety yeah. percent of the work. Okay? True. You're making content for those people, stuff mm -hmm. that they would care about. Mm -hmm. That's your audience, stuff that they will care about. And what do they care about? You. Yeah. Not real estate specifically. Right. But you. Mm -hmm. Your success in real estate. That's a different message mm -hmm. than saying real estate. Um, so you make content for those people, creates engagement, that creates threads of conversation. And every so often, that conversation is going to lead to be about real estate, and that's going to lead to leads. It's, I mean, it's the same game it's always been. It's yes. just that now you have new tools to make it more efficient to talk to people. And it's fun. Yeah, it's fun at the end it's of the day. It's fun at the end of the day. Like, in the beginning, it's stressful. Yeah. Like, anything else you do, it's going to be stressful. But it does end up being more fun as you continue in the process and you keep doing it because it gets easier. It just becomes automatic. And now it's just a smoother process. Yeah. And last thing I'll say is that on top of all that, you just never really know what opportunities are going to be created by doing it. Absolutely. You don't know, you don't know who you're going to talk to. You don't know what they're going to say when they're doing the show mm -hmm. that will trigger something something new something new some new venture <laughs> something like you just never ever ever know you never know like uh, you're not even planning it but someone's gonna say something mm -hmm. and it goes quote unquote viral like within your community yeah and it brings you 10 deals just because it like was that popular just anything you know or it could it, it may not do that but or, yeah. or it could but it may not it, it may take won't. you yeah it may take you on another in another angle of something else that you're interested in doing. Or, you know, like, I I love this quote I recently posted on Facebook. And it says, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. I didn't make that one up. I found it online somewhere. And I love that quote. And I say it often because um, I'm getting older, but I like my challenges. I like you know, putting myself out there even more now than I used to. And it does open up doors. It opens up opportunities, if not for me, for someone else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if the anyone in the audience is thinking about starting some videos, do, start to start doing some videos, recording videos or um, touching on something that has to do with social media recordings, um, podcasting, um, I say, do it. Talk to someone, anyone. If you don't call Gino, which you should. Go on I, YouTube. Yeah, go on YouTube. Look up, do a little research, but then set a deadline. Set a deadline for when you're going to do this, who you're going to call, make a plan. You can even call me. I'd be happy to talk to you guys, anyone that is interested in um, kind of... Um, if they, if you want me to explain anything that I went through in the last uh, month to get this podcast going, because I'm an open book, I'd love to help anyone. But yeah, it, it's just about, you know, getting out there and doing something. If it's a little seed that someone planted in your head years ago and it's still in there, there's a reason why. 
follow the signs. <laughs> mm-hmm. 100%. And, uh, you know, once you get that first result, which could be just you posted it and someone said something nice. Yes. Or uh, you posted something. Someone said, oh, hey, I just saw your your content. Can you come do CMA? Okay, then you got a real, real result. Okay, mm-hmm. but you don't need that to happen. No, for the, for it to click. Because once you get that result, things click, and you realize, oh, this is worth doing, for various reasons. Yes, for business, but also it makes you feel good. You know, it's you're 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 doing something you like. There's a lot of benefits to that. But once you get that first result, it makes it so much easier to continue. And like you said, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. We're, we put a lot of things in our head and excuses about something that is really not that hard. With just a little guidance, you it's smooth sailing. You just have to push yourself to the point where you're not going to turn back and you do it. Yes. Right? Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share about um, your business, um, the real estate marketing business or um, uh, anything else you'd like to share about that before we wrap it up? Um, Well, I always want to say that, yes, I want to get your business and you could pay me to do things for you, whether it be production, coaching, whatever. But my, my main goal is always to educate you Mm -hmm. so that in six months or a year, whatever it is, you say, Hey, I appreciate everything you've done, but I kind of got it from here. Like I've learned and it's really not that hard. Trust me. But now you like, how can I get you, get you to a point where you want to fire me? Mm. Right. I know that sounds weird, but uh, that's how I kind of view all of it because it becomes very power, much more powerful when you understand what you're doing and you have the, the skills and the resources and you're doing it every day. It becomes very, very powerful very quickly. And that's the goal because then you're getting real business results. Right. Yes. And that's, that's good for everybody involved. Um, so I'm not here to like, I'm not a very good salesman at the end of the day. I'm, I can give you good information. You're a good I'll educator. To, a good educator, maybe. And I'll give it to you straight. Yes. Yes, I'm, you will. I'm not like a great, <laughs> I'm not here to like dupe you into anything. I'm not here to get you to pay me money for stuff just because. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I could sit here and sell you and I could explain things in a way that like sounds very complicated and, oh, you should be doing this and this and this and this and you have no idea what I'm saying, but it sounds good. So you're like, okay, maybe I should be and then you pay me money to do it. But if it's not actually helping you, I'm not going to tell you to do it. So like my goal is to get you to a point where you can do it yourself. So if anyone does hear it and they want to have a conversation because that's where it's all going to start, let's mm-hmm. see if there's anything that I can do to help you. How can I help you fill those those holes or gaps in your business or your marketing. And there's again, 200 different ways we could do that and everyone's different. So let's have a conversation. Awesome. So Gino, how do people find you? Well, luckily I've got a unique name, so it's the same everywhere. Uh, Gino Pronos at Gino Pronos everywhere. Gino Pronos.com. Gino Pronos is yeah. That's kind of unique. Yeah. So, uh, Easy to remember, and it's the same everywhere. So okay, it's easy. So social media, social media. okay. Google him. Google. <laughs> e- email Gino GinoPronos dot com. How could you forget? Awesome. Well, thank you, Gino, for everything you've done. It was great to see you in front of the camera this time. Um, thank you for helping me launch the podcast and um, keep me uh, moving with it. Because it's uh, it has been interesting, and it, it, now it's even more fun than it was in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But it's um, it's a really great experience, and you have helped me make that a great experience. So thank you. Thank you. I know it's going to be a lot of people find a lot of value in this, so it's been an awesome project to be a part of. Awesome. Thank you so much. So guys, um, if you have any questions about today's show, you want to reach out to Gino. Remember Gino Pronos. That's where you'll find him. Um, If you want to send me any suggestions for future shows, reach out to me, DaliaSellsHomes at gmail.com 
call me at 773-879-4855. You could find me on all social media platforms, Dahlia the Realtor. And I'll see you on the next episode of Move Ahead with Dahlia. Make it a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.